Hello, it's Sarah. I have been playing with watercolor paper and my Tombow markers. These are water-based markers that have, um, it just says acid-free. Anyway, they have the brush tip and the bullet tip and they really work nice with water. So you can kind of draw with them and then create a watercolor effect. So I've been playing around um, making some ATCs and I think what I've discovered is for the look that I'm going for, I kind of like the flowers bigger. Um, I made a whole sheet of little flowers, like just the flowers without stems or anything and that's what these are but I think I actually like the look of just getting a piece of a flower or two in there and then I ended up doing some stamping on the background um, as well but I'm going to show you a really easy way to get to make some ATCs just have you can have a whole sheet of these in pretty quick now the idea is I don't know if you can see these, but I did these in pencil. And every time I've done it, I've done it in pencil. And this is going to be the first time that I'm going to just go straight to paper with the markers because that's probably, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, because I always erase my pencil line. So I want to save myself that step. But basically, I want to create a scene like this on this big paper because see this is I could have made three ATCs out of this and I probably will um, but I want them bigger so it looks more um, watercolory so you see what I'm saying I don't know I don't know what I'm saying but I just like the bigger images better than the smaller images so these are the kind of flowers that I've been making I just kind of um, took these from here and there little types of flowers that I've been seeing lately. Um, I like this one a lot. It's like a little rosebud, I guess. Um, and you can make any type of little, these are doodle flowers, that's what I consider them. And I have four different kinds. One, two, three, four, yeah. So that's all I've been using, and just different kind of um, leaf shapes. And I'm gonna fill the paper pretty much because it isn't exactly the size for, I'm going to have scrap on both sides once I cut it into um, ATC size. So um, just use, and I'm using, this happens to be the Artist Loft brand. I've had it forever, 90 pound watercolor pad, cold press, and I'm on my last piece. Um, so just grab whatever paper you have. Um, I think I'm going to... Turn it over to the bumpy side. I don't know why. Um, and so for the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pick a color <clears throat> that I want all of, like, every time I do a flower, I keep them all the same color. So every, like the little rosebud flower, they're all pink. So let's just do that. I'll make them all this color pink. So I'm going to put one of them up here. And all you do is you make a little... Um, kind of curly cue and then a body and that's small see but I'm gonna make a bigger one over here that's really big and then I'll make a medium one right here I guess that's medium so that's basically it. I didn't really make a very good curly cue. But see, really the details come when you use your ink on top of it, when you use your black ink, which I, I've just been using a Sharpie, but see the, I'm gonna go over it with my Sharpie. So it'll make it really cool. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna do, I love this color, and Tim Holtz has a very similar color to this. It's like an, it's orange, but it doesn't turn out orange when you put it on the paper. I'm going to do this big one that I like to do. It's just a round circle, and then I'm going to give it a center. And I'm going to give all of these um, stems as well. I'm going to do a purple. I'm going to kind of keep the colors that I've used to the side so I can definitely make sure that they're all different. Um, this is a very dark purple, but there's this flower that you can do. It's like one, it's 
like four petals. That's it. And then I'm going to put like a little something on the underneath of it. I'm going to put a big one up here. So I would be, I would have done all this in pencil first and then come back with the pens. So I'm kind of trying to save myself a step and no erasing because I have a racer all over my floor, I'm sure. So I'm doing them in threes, I think. So then we have, this one gets a center. I'm going to do it, um, I'm going to do, let's see, I'm um, sorry, sometimes I have to think. <laughs> I hate to think. This is a different color pink. And that's basically the flower. It's just, that's it. And you can color in a little bit if you want, but the water is going to color it in. So that's the center for that one. Now I need my big, like, um, let's see, I'm going to do orange and yellow for the center. So a small, I'm going to do a small orange, small orange, I need one over here. And then a bigger yellow, which you probably can't really see, but this yellow is a bright yellow. And I think I'm going to do red or, yeah, this color red. And I'm just going to go and make petals. I'm kind of crashing into stuff. So this is where, if you did it in pencil, you wouldn't have this issue. So you get the idea. You're going to cover this whole page with your doodle flowers. And definitely do doodle, doodle um, stems, okay? So I'm going to set this aside, and this is what you'll end up with. So this is what we were just doing, creating these flowers here. Then all I've done is... Uh, I have this piece of paper. I have all these water brushes. And I'm going to just put my Tombows back in the drawer and make myself some room. Um, I have a bunch of different kinds of water brushes. And you can just use a regular um, round brush to add the water. But basically, you just take it. And I like to go up, like kind of add a little water to the piece and then go into the color and it just pulls it off there and so you get a little shading, kind of, it's darker to light. And be careful when you're touching the yellow, like it'll turn red and yellow, what do they make, orange? So that wouldn't be a horrible mistake, but um, when you're using colors next to each other, kind of be aware that you can make mud but see how much how much color I have um, that's the only one of them then I like to just kind of squeeze it and get that this this brush I don't know who makes these but they can also suck the water up like if I keep squeezing and I let go it'll suck up the wet water off the um, off the page and it'll be colored so I'll, all of a sudden I'll have orange um, water inside my brush so I just like to squeeze it out a little bit here's another pink one so I just squirted water and then you rub and you're done and I like to let it kind of be a little wetter so that it um, looks more watercolory so I just squeeze that water down and it can look it doesn't have to be the perfect shape right now because we're going to go over this with our, um, I've actually been using a Sharpie, um, fine point Sharpie, and it's working. Kirby, why are you trying to steal my blanket? I have a blanket <laughs> under my feet. I have to get a little rug in here because um, we have um, wood floors. And uh, my feet have been cold in here because I, I sit so long. I'm just putting that under because I don't want to get my mat colored. Uh, I'm going to do the background blue. So you get the idea. So 
The next thing you're going to do, I'm going to leave that, I'll do that in a minute. These have been drying for a while. So like I said, I've been using my Sharpie. I also have a great pen. This is the Uniball Vision Fine Point, and it's a waterproof pen. Uniball Vision, you can get these just in the stationery department at your stores, but it's a fine point. The Sharpie's a little, this is the Sharpie Ultra Fine, but it's a little bit of a thicker point, so for this I'm gonna use it. Um, just take your fine point, and now here's where you're gonna be able to fix up. So you can still see the pen, let's see if this pencil line comes off. It usually does. See, even through the, the Tombow color, you can get off your um, pencil marks. So if you hear, it's pretty cool. Like, I don't know how it does it. But anyway, it just, this doing it this way, or this way I should say, just saved me the, the but you might not like your design as much, but it's basically going to be an ATC, so you're cutting it up into pieces anyway. So now here's where you get all your nice detail. I'll zoom in and for this little one I'm gonna go make sure I get a nice curly cue and you can double line it you can make cross hatch lines you can do whatever you want it's a doodle flower right so doodle how you like to doodle and like you could go like that and make it a little more interesting that way. So look how much more detailed that looks all of a sudden, right? And this little guy, he just gets a circle. You can do another circle maybe. And that's it. And just like these leaves. And this. So see how all of a sudden it starts to pop, right? And look really watercolory. Uh, I'm gonna do this purple one. You can just all of a sudden neaten up your watercolor that you did. If it looks kinda jagged or whatever, it just neatens it up, that nice dark pen. So hopefully I'm in the shot. And I'll go around again makes it look more doodly and I took this right to the edge because I'm probably going to trim it anyway and it'll um, I don't know I wanted to fill the paper as best I could so these are just little leaves that I decided to make come off the bottom and then I like doing those little squiggles this one comes from here and this is just Very simple, but see how I didn't go over the green, but it really, it like, okay, like for this one, that got messy. The water went into the other color, right? So I'll just double line it. And then I might double line these this time. Maybe not all of them. But do you see how good the Sharpie does on this? I like it. So that like kind of neatens it up, right? So now you get the idea. I'm going to down here. See, even though that's a blob, like it's a just a blob of green, you make it look like it's supposed to look with the pen. See, like it just straightens it right out. So I'm going to zoom back out. Now the last thing you want to do is add the blue. Um, I think I'm going to go away and finish this, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I add the background color. All right, be right back. Okay, so I wanted to come back and just show you the difference. Look how much like this was the one that I didn't use. Um, any pencil lines or anything, I just went straight to the paper with the pen. And look at the mess. See the messy flowers? Let me zoom in a little bit. 
but I'm pretty happy with this. I wasn't sure what it was gonna be like, but like, see, you can't really see the lines. So I'm just gonna make them. And I'm telling you, I am loving this uh, Sharpie Fine Point for this. It works great. Look, you can't even tell what that was. It's so um, bled out, you know, like it's bleeding out. <laughs> Um, but now all of a sudden it just neatens it up so much. Like, look at this one. I'm going to do a double line around this part. And then maybe overlap my petal lines, like making that little curly cue. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. I mean, you can even go double, but I mean, it just, it isn't an issue. No matter how messy it looked before you do the lines, I think that looks really cool. And you could even, I was thinking about like making, um, I don't know, circles or chain, like putting crosshatch lines places or something like on this one. You could absolutely just like, make little, I don't know what these are, kind of like gather lines or something. You can add all, more doodling if you want to, you know. Um, like these guys, these flowers could have, oh man, I hate that glare. Sorry guys. Um, they could have like a line like this. It's a doodle flower, so you can absolutely make them as plain or as detailed. I think I like that. Just adding those lines. And how about on some leaves? Like what about if we did um, the light green leaves? Hmm. You could just do some, maybe just half on half of the leaf and give it a little extra on just the light green ones. Um, I like that. So now when I cut this apart, it's going to give me, and you could even like zentangle parts of it. Um, I just liked making that little jaggly line going down. Like this is kind of messy in here. I don't love that. Do I want to add? I think I do want to add the lines. All right, so but the next step is to add the blue. Now, on these, I kind of used, wait, which ones do I want to show you? I used, um, I have four different blues, these ones. So when you see dark blue, let me move this so you don't get confused. When you see the darker blue, it's because I used a darker blue there. So that's why it's like, kind of showing as dark and light and dark and light and maybe the dark puddled so that's what I've been doing I've been taking so I only have I only have four colors of blue and I actually put the darkest one back this is the I I'm pretty much going to stick to these two I think but then I'm going to um maybe put this turquoisey one in there too but I'm definitely going to start at the outside edges with the darkest blue um, and you don't have to like color because that's the fun of it is that you don't want to, what I mean is don't color in the lines or anything like just put some on there and then the water is going to spread the color for you. So you don't really have to worry about where you're putting it. So I try to put a little tuck it in here and there. Um, probably a little more dark. Um, then I'm going to just add, and I use the brush tip of the um, Tombow kind of like on the side of the brush so that you can just cover a lot more area easier. And I think for this one I'm going to really try not to cover, all, like to leave some white showing because I really have a hard time stopping myself 
these um the markers are so br bright color and it's fun like I've been making these this afternoon and it's I'm not sick of it yet like it's pretty fun so let's see do I have the light color and then maybe I will put this turquoisey color just maybe see, in just a couple spots it's pretty much it's it's basically the same color as the light blue so it's not that different um, so let's see what happens. So now the only difference I do with this is I use a I've been using a brush. And I mean, let me see. I have these water brushes. This is pretty, let's see. This one's full. I just filled it. So let's see how I do with this. I'm just gonna let it let the water fall onto the paper and then just start to move it along. And I kind of do tuck it in. <clears throat> around the edges of the like I try to really not go onto the peat onto the um flower just around the flower like that was a lot of water so I'm trying to move it I'm pulling it and I went over the red but red and blue make purple so that won't be that bad but that was actually a lot of water that I did and I don't like to blot it to pick up the water as much because it changes what the um, color does when you blot. Like you don't get that true um, saturation of color or the the darkness that you would get. So yeah, actually I, I like using a water brush. I'm just squeezing and then you stop squeezing and kind of just brush the water over the um, colored area and it melts, the, the pigment kind of just like melts onto the paper and I definitely put too much on here because um, it isn't looking as um, like different color or kind of like um, white and blue it's looking really blue but now I just got some pink in it so I'll go away and come back and um, show you the finished result see and then like I can just take where there wasn't even any blue over here you can just pick up the water and the water is blue so it that's where I'm gonna get my light color that's what you should do I can move this all over so I pick it up and move it I don't really want it on the all right so I'll go away and come back when it's done okay so this one has a lot more of the dark blue on it and this one I tried to like this one is the one I just free didn't use any pencil or plan ahead and it came out fine and this one I planned and you know tried to space things out and I mean it might be better once I cut it apart because there is color kind of in all the different places on this one like right here is a little gap of color but I mean it doesn't matter um, and this one I definitely went lighter with the blue like I didn't put as much dark but I kind of like the dark like I don't know I can't explain it it looks good all right so let me show you the one the last thing I'm doing I have my stays on ink pad and my script stamp um, just gonna take it and ink up this top area and just hit and miss I'm gonna try and let me see if my brayer will I don't think my brayer is gonna flatten it out <laughs> maybe but that, it kind of seems like it because eh. when you stamp it's better to have like a nice flat surface um, I love the smell of stays on. All right, so I'm just inking that up and I'm going to hit it in some of the big, the bluer areas where um, there isn't anything. And once I make the ATCs, maybe I'll come back and do it again because I'm kind of just trying to fill the background 
All right, let's just, that that's it. So I'm going to All right, I'm going to just leave that and move on to the next step. This is all, the next step is cutting it down to ATC size. And I told you we're going to have scrap, so I'm wondering, should I go? I think we have some nice, let's see, if I go three and a half, I think I can do th seven is three and a half and three and a half is six. Um, wait, 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 seven, and then eight, nine, ten, eleven, I don't know what I'm saying here, um, I think I just want them to go this way, so I'm just going to go two and a half, I'm going to cut this off, and start going two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. Sorry. I don't know why that threw me. Because I want them to be straight up and down. And... So yeah, so you get this scrap. And then three and a half this way. But look, that's an ATC. I like that. Isn't that cool? Um, I'm not crazy about the center of this one. So I should have... Look, I have it. This is another piece of scrap. Um, so I'm only getting two out of each piece. Maybe I cut it the wrong way. Um, I'm going to cut... And you know, you could add a word if... Um, there's a space you could add more doodling. That's kind of cool too. Um, I think I'm going to try and get a little bit more of that in there. Since I have so much waste, got like three different. Three and a half. And I really like this one. I cut it right in half. Yeah, I think I am. Like that. You know, I only got a couple. I get like nine, I guess. I don't know. I like this part. So yeah, so this is... Anyway, I'll show you the next step. I just take my Sharpie again and make kind of like a line along the outside edge about like an eighth of an inch in and just frame it like that and then see I really like them when they're in pieces like this it just I don't know, it looks so cool. And then you would ink the edges, and I've been using black soot, which is um, the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. And I think, like, I like, let's see, these have the black soot on them. And I like it. I think the black soot is a good way to go. So yeah, I like them. I think they're coming out good. And like I said, there's still tons you could do. I mean, you could do more to them if you wanted to. But for this little demo, I'm just going to ink the edges. And sign it. You should sign your work. And look, there it is. That's a little ATC. I could do more um, line work on doodling on the leaves. Alright you guys.
guys so that's what I've been doing and look I mean it, this is scrap but like you could you could maybe um, use this in collage or something I don't know because it's awfully cute right maybe just cut it out and use it I actually used um, one of these I put a piece of can't find it but I put a word on top of it with um, they all look cool so all right that's it so if you ever need a bunch of ATC's if you're doing a swap or something just draw yourself up some doodle flowers and color them and you're good to go all right you guys thanks for watching